I would expect them for this product and this price range to have taken it all apart, cleaned it, greased it, and put it back together without any grinding dust. Because that means that I'm going to have to do that myself. Kind of disappointing. Hi, I'm Chris from Tiger Moth Racing. Today I'm excited to do an unboxing for you and a personal review on the new lathe chucks that we got for the Woodstock International lathe. And uh, I want to tell you about all the things that I've learned about them uh, over the last couple of weeks. The last couple of weeks I've done hours and hours of research on lathe chucks looking to upgrade what I have been using for years and years. We have the old traditional independent four jaw chuck here. I use this maybe a few times a year um, for eccentric or you know indicated parts, uh, something odd shaped. It's, it's been very handy for stuff that I couldn't do any other way, but honestly hardly ever gets used. This lives on the shelf most of the time. The one I use the most is this little five inch three jaw. Um, this is the ch uh, chuck that came with the machine and uh, honestly has been great. It's not the best quality. It's probably an $80 chuck, but for general first operation cutting, um, it's been great. One of the things that led me to look into getting some new chucks is some of the larger turning I've been doing recently. I'm starting to do a lot of disc shaped parts uh, for some reason this year and a lot of playing around with things like gear cutting where it's very handy to be able to just throw a part of pretty much any size into your chuck and know that it's going to be centered within uh, the tolerance you're looking for. And I do mostly small to micro size parts and up to about 10 inch diameter is kind of the size of turning work that I do in this shop. This three jaw that I use every day has been great, but it has little things like you can feel and see the play in the jaws. And these are reversible, but they're single piece also. So you can't make any attachments to go onto this to do something different. What it is now is all you get. Uh, you can turn the jaws around to clamp on the outside, but that's it. And normally I would go from the three jaw in a rough stock turning over to the 5C call it chuck for a second operation uh, where I don't have to worry about concentricity because I know it's already within the tolerance of the call it, which is usually very good, uh, easily within a thousandth. I did lots of research uh, online looking at different brands and uh, different options that are available and it led me back to deciding between three jaw and six jaw. What we ended up buying was Gator Chucks. The Gator brand seems to be very popular and well known in the industry. They sell a huge range of chucks including everything that I was looking to get. The prices are reasonable and we're going to get to see today what the quality looks like. So I'm interested to compare the new Gator Chucks to these mystery import uh, Chucks that I've been using for decades. Okay, so this is very exciting. Um, it's pretty rare that I get brand new tools in the shop and um, to have a lineup of them like this is virtually unheard of uh, at the same time. So this is going to be pretty exciting. We'll pop these open and get a first impression and, and kind of see what we got here. So these came from Zorro. They are a tool distributor that I've been using uh, more and more recently. They have free shipping. They usually have the best price I can find online for a lot of stuff. I do want to mention that for, I think most things on Zorro is free shipping, but you can also call and negotiate prices with them. Um, I won't tell you what 
discount they gave for these because I don't want to have them be held to that for everything. Um, but it goes the same thing for MSC and other companies like that. MSC's not going to like to hear this, but sometimes their prices can be uh, insultingly high. And they do that with the understanding that a lot of people are going to call and negotiate the price with them. So don't be afraid to do that. I recommend doing that. Um, with a large order, you're spending any decent kind of money, you can save a lot um, just with a 10 minute phone call. It's like we have one in here. This is one of the little ones, I guess. So we'll just get them all out here and then pop them open. Okay. Supposed to have four all together. We have another little one. And then we have a bigger one. This is what we have. These are all gator. They're all the semi-steel bodies on them, which from my research, I think is a nice marketing way of saying cast iron. Um, it's probably a higher strength than the like gray or ductile iron that uh, you might see with general castings. So I'm curious to see what these are like and uh, compare them to the other chucks that we have. We'll start with this one. This is intended to be a replacement for my everyday use three jaw chuck on the little bench top lathe here. We've got the T-handle wrench here with the probably OSHA spring on it, mounting bolts and Allen wrenches, and we have foam. It looks like there's no visible damage here. So here's our three-jaw uh, basic everyday chuck. It has the removable reversible jaws. This one is uh, set true or what they call tech true also. So it has the set screws in the side that allow you to center it on the spindle that you're mounting it to. So you can get the tolerance down to five tenths or you know whatever you're looking for to get uh, without relying on the positioning or precision of your back plate and all that stuff. It says right on it, made in China. So these are still Chinese product, even though they're quite expensive compared to uh, a lot of the stuff you might find on eBay and things like that imported uh, through smaller companies. So I'm hoping that the precision and quality is worth it because you could buy four or five general chucks for the price of one of these, honestly. So there's that guy. Have another five inch here. This should be six jaw. Same paperwork and tooling. So this is very cute. Look at this guy. This is a five inch six jaw. Same, it's set true with reversible jaws. It looks like they use a grease in the scroll, whereas all of the Chinese ones I've seen just come oiled and usually with a bunch of grinding dust in there that they never bothered to remove. So these were probably taken apart after grinding, cleaned, greased, and then reassembled, which is what I would expect for the uh, price range that these go, even though they're the, uh, the semi-steel bodies. So one of the things that makes me kind of twitchy when I'm checking out a new tool like this is something like all the chamfers on the tips of the jaws being different. Some of them don't even have a chamfer and other ones have huge chamfers. That stuff kind of pisses me off. But mainly what I was looking at here is when you close it up, you should see a perfect hexagon, you know, when the jaws are totally closed and you don't. And I can't tell if that's because the 
way it looks from the chamfers or, or if the jaws themselves are not all at the same diameter at the same time, if you know what I mean. So if I close the chuck lightly on this dowel pin, um, I get four jaws, it looks like, that are snug on it, and then these two are loose. So I can literally wiggle the pin around, but I notice that when I do tighten it up, they all grab and it's very secure. So it's probably concentric when it's clamped down, although that's gonna be one of the first things I check out when I get it mounted on the lathe is to see at different diameters are these actually clamping tight and um, all at the same time. They do feel a lot better than all of the other chucks that I have, even when they were new. These have definitely been cleaned and greased before they were put together. I won't say that they're immaculate, there still is some grinding dust on the chuck and the jaws, which to me tells me that they did do a final grinding after assembly, um, which is kind of annoying and frustrating too. Um, I would expect them for this product and this price range to have taken it all apart, cleaned it, greased it, and put it back together without any grinding dust because that means that I'm gonna have to do that myself. Kind of disappointing. And then we have this guy, which is gonna be a six inch. I do like to get a whole set of something if I can, honestly, because I found in the past that it allows you more flexibility and is very convenient in times. You might think we'll just get a bigger chuck and use that one for everything. But a lot of times you'll have a weird overhang or a part that just won't um, easily fit on that larger chuck. And it's also safer to have less swinging material on the machine while you're working on it. So we have the six inch, six jaw. They do look very good. Pretty pleased with the grinding. We'll have to check the uh, concentricity when we get them mounted. I am gonna be making all the back plates for these. The, uh, the loads that we're gonna be putting on these are not anything to justify a expensive steel back plate for these on these little machines. And then we have this guy, which should be eight inch. And this is probably too big to go on the little lathe here, but I got this with the intent of using it on the uh, tilting rotary table. I have some projects for that coming up that we'll show you guys when we get this mounted on there and concentric. So look at this guy, okay. That's exciting, these are gonna be great, very handy and fast for doing uh, larger discs and round parts very quickly and easily. And I'm interested in maybe making uh, some aluminum jaws for these so we can uh, machine some soft jaws also. You can tell, particularly on the eight inch over here, you can see this black dust on the outside of the jaws and it does come off, it's gonna take some scraping, but that's definitely left over from some kind of grinding operation um, that they did after assembly. So basically that's annoying because the grinding dust is abrasive and it's going to get into everything and wear it out prematurely. And um, it just seems like that's unnecessary and shouldn't happen unless they're expecting you as a you know buyer to to automatically know that you're going to have to do that yourself but um, again for the price of these that should not be the case this should be ready to wipe the oil off and literally put it on your machine another annoying thing i found that um, honestly i've seen everywhere else is the use of english and metric screws on the same product um, drives me insane, but everybody does it. 
So they were courteous enough to put an English US standard bolt for mounting the jaws, which is the only thing that most people are going to uh, interact with on this truck. Um, so you can use your standard wrench to rotate the jaws and clean it and do whatever you need to do. But for mounting the chuck and taking the chuck apart, you have a metric uh, bolt. So you have to have both sets of wrenches to do everything on this chuck. Again, it's not a big surprise, but it would be amazing if you know a, a company would make a quality chuck that all had the same hardware. Let's take a look and check out something else that's annoying on most chucks I've seen is the uh, chuck jaws are numbered and these are laser engraved uh, one through six on the chuck body. So you have that position. And then I'm looking at the side of the jaw here and they did do a dash number. So this is uh, jaw number four and this is uh, ID number dash four. So that is the number four jaw. And then what I wanna find out is if the mounting body is also numbered and I can see it is, it's a dash four here. So that's great, that's the first time I've seen that done in a long time where the body, the base, and the jaw itself are all numbered. So you can take this chuck completely apart, mess everything up uh, order-wise, put it all back together and know which one goes where and it's all gonna have the same um, precision that it had when it was new. So that's awesome, they did a good job with that. So let me uh, swap these jaws around and I wanna just see how this is gonna fit with one of the parts that I'm gonna be working on coming up here. Um, it's a very nice fit. You know, if you keep it clean, that fit's gonna last for years and hundreds or thousands of swaps of these jaws, which, you know, is really doesn't happen that often. Um, but you can tell that it's full of grinding dust um, that was not cleaned after the last operation that they did. Kind of rude and sad, but that's how it is. Chuck is going to be used on the tilting rotary table um, for bars and um, large flat pieces like this. So instead of having to make a fixture to do a second operation on something like this, the jaws have enough contact area to grab onto something even like a finished uh, gear without uh, damaging it and, and with having enough contact all the way around you can get at least one tooth on each jaw and do your cutting operation, whatever features or changes you're gonna do here um, without uh, having to make anything special. This will work with any diameter. I would probably still, for a finished part, put some aluminum shim in between the part and the jaw uh, if you want to, but that's an example of how we're gonna use this one. So this guy is going to live on here, and that gives us the tilting capability. So tilting and rotating. These chucks, uh, the smaller ones, were primarily purchased to use on this lathe. And this is my lathe that I have been using for years. Um, this currently is the biggest one I have. Um, looking at uh, different options for getting something bigger. I did convert this to CNC. Um, it was running off of a Probotics controller, uh, but it was one of the older ones that was not very reliable. It's a relatively inexpensive benchtop lathe. This is made by Woodstock International, um, and it does have the Shop Fox brand on it. I have been very happy with this machine and the other Shop Fox products. They tend to be a little bit step above in quality and reliability compared to a lot of other machines that I've seen and used. 
Um, so I have this mounted just on a uh, mobile cabinet and uh, have pretty much a full set of turning tooling here for this. It's very convenient to have it on a cabinet like this. And these are the soft close drawers, so you don't have to, uh, you don't slam it when you close it. It uh, will grab it at the end of the travel and close it for you. And then down here we have a full set of uh, collets for it. So we have, this is 5C, uh, 1 16th up to 1 and an eighth, including the hex and square collets expanding. Um, soft uh, soft ones you can cut yourself. Got pretty much a full set here. I really like this cabinet uh, for this. You can just open a drawer, grab a tool, change it, put it back, close it, and go back to what you're doing really fast and easy. Uh, nice way to work with this. But anyway, this is what we got the trucks for. So these guys, I'll be making the back plates to mount onto this threaded spindle. I'll be doing these out of cast iron. It's fast, easy to turn, and uh, is more than strong enough for all the work that I do. It's a pretty simple system on these. You have this OD here that's precision ground. So you're matching your adapter to this uh, OD and this flat back flange here, and it's really the threaded part of the spindle is what it's floating on, so it doesn't locate on the thread, it locates on this diameter and the back uh, flange. So when you tighten it down, you're concentric and square, and that's what aligns your chuck. So I'll be making back plates for these. This is quite a bit smaller than I expected, but I think it's still big enough to make a decent uh, adapter for that, and still use the uh, set true. So this is a, you know, it's a cute little chuck, um, but this is a pretty small lathe too. So this would be a normal chuck for this machine. And then probably the biggest that uh, I would go on this machine would be the six inch. I might entertain making a back plate for the eight inch for this machine, but you wouldn't uh, at that point be able to open the jaws very far. So I don't know how useful it would be, but uh, these guys will be on here. So today we did a first look at uh, the new lathe chucks. I do want to do a second part uh, showing you the chucks mounted on the lathe and uh, we'll do some evaluation and, and checking with an indicator and see what uh, we come up with there. Um, but um, hopefully this was helpful and uh, gave you some things to check out and look for when you're shopping for new chucks um, or even checking out the ones you have in your shop already. Thank you.